Hello everyone and welcome to my brand new series that is not about me. Hello everyone and welcome to my Spotlight On series where I shine my little spotlight on the stars of theatre and musicals and chat to them about their career so far in this business we call show. If you haven't seen my face before then hi my name is Emily and I'm an actor singer based in the UK and I spend my time either performing in shows or talking about them. If you love theatre as much as I do then click subscribe to join my stagey little online family. Also while you're there click thumbs up if you would like to see more videos videos like this one on my channel and if you are really into this then comment down below with your favorite movie musical so welcome to my new series where I will be chatting to the stars and creators of West End and Broadway theatre the award winners and the fan favorites today I will be chatting to the incredibly talented award-winning room igniting burn the house down Morgan Lloyd Malcolm writer of arguably one of the most successful plays of our time Amelia successful in this context refers to funny clever passionate inclusive feminist fiery oh and three-time Olivier award-winning yes Amelia landed in the West End with a but this was not Morgan Lloyd Malcolm's first rodeo. Oh no. <laughs> I'm going to give you a quick overview of Morgan Lloyd Malcolm's career just so we're on the same page before I chat to the genius herself. Morgan is a playwright and screenwriter with a number of strings to her bow. She was commissioned by the Globe. Yep. Shakespeare's Globe to write Amelia which debuted there in the summer of 2018 before transferring to the West End in 2019. It is also in the works to become a film so Morgan is currently in development for this as well as TV dramas and comedy. She is a very busy lady because she is also developing a book adaptation for film with Lucky Chap Films and adapting her play The Wasp into a screenplay for Paradise City Films. The Wasp is one of Lloyd Mann Malcolm's thrillers. It is amazing. I've read it so many times so I for one would love to see it on screen. Morgan was shortlisted for the Charles Winter Most Promising Playwright Award after her play Belongings was produced at the Hampstead Theatre and the Trafalgar Studios in 2011. This was followed by a successful run of The Wasp also at the Hampstead Theatre in 2015. In 2013 she became a member of the Soho Six for the Soho Theatre. She has also also co-written site-specific plays with Katie Lyons to much acclaim, produced by Look Left, Look Right. And she co-wrote the pantomimes for the Lyric Hammersmith from 2009 to 2012. She has also written two large community plays for the Old Vix New Voices. Platform? and Epidemic. Just some of the work she has written includes Untitled, Hellscreen, Edie's Diary, The Wasp, Amelia, Belongings, Good Me, Bad Me, Mum, You Once Said Yes. I could go on, her CV is as fast as it is impressive. I definitely encourage you to look up her work because in my opinion, for what it's worth, it's some of the most exciting modern playwriting in theatre today. Okay, so fangirling aside, it is time to let you hear from the lady herself. That's right, we have come to the part of the video that you've been looking forward to. Here's what happened when I caught up with Morgan Lloyd Malcolm. How did you get into playwriting? What was the first thing that you ever wrote? Um, so actually, the very first uh, play that ever got properly put on was my uh, it was a play called Fanny and Madge which um I wrote as part of well actually I just wrote it for me and Katie Lyons who, um to perform and Verity will know to direct and we we were at university together at Goldsmiths we were doing drama and theatre arts and um and and somebody was running one of the other students was running like a a, a like he set up a festival I think just in one of the studios and he said you know do you want a slot um and yeah I just wrote this this play and it was comedy it was um comedy about two students I mean it was so navel gazy it was about two students who live in a in a and best friends living in a in a flat together and they're they fall out and then they become friends again it's really basic but it was really fun and and it went and it went really well at, at university um at this festival that they they put on and so we thought well let's try and do the edinburgh festival 
and we did in 2002 we did the edinburgh um uh, fringe festival at the gilded balloon and it went really well like it was a kind of it was back in the days when you could just rock up and not lose an all like we just raised a bit of money on doing raffles and stuff <laughs> and like printed all our posters you know at katie's dad's work and like we just kind of really sort of pulled whatever together and we had such a brilliant time and then we ended up going on the three of us ended up doing another four shows over uh, five more years and oh wow uh, yeah it kind of started things off but yeah that was the first play i ever wrote oh, wow. <laughs> so it did pretty it well so then yeah i know <laughs> So had you intended to go into writing or was it literally just that chance came up and you thought, I'll try it? I think because I, 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 th I thought I was going to be a, an actress. I thought I was going to be a performer. Um, that's why I did drama. But, but because because the course at Goldsmiths was everything, like we, we did, you know, costume design, lighting, mm. all sorts of different kinds of performance and, and creation, loads of devising. Um, I think because of that and we just started making our own stuff and and write and you know and 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 I was writing with Katie and Verity for those sort of six years and I think I mean I got to the point where I just didn't want to perform anymore and so I carried on the writing but and, and that felt that felt like the right decision but I think yeah I think I always thought I was going to be a performer but then when I realized what that meant and that I wasn't very good at dealing with auditioning and all the, the the rejection and all of that I wasn't very good at that um and I didn't feel very in control either I kind of I, I think with writing I felt more in control of what I was making so um so yeah that's why it kind of I focused on that basically so you've obviously you've co-written with people and you've written by yourself do you mm -hmm. prefer either or or is it just a totally different experience ah uh, it's it's so different and 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 like I kind of it de really depends on the project like sometimes I really don't want to write something on my own because it feels daunting and big and actually sometimes it's lovely to write with other people and share that responsibility but also kind of feed into each other's practices like writing pant like I, I did four of the pantomimes at the Lyric Hammersmith with Joel Hallward and I could I, I feel like they wouldn't have been the same if I just tried to do them on my own and we you know part of it was the fact that we were working together and bouncing things off each other and and sharing the load as well it's quite it's quite a big big undertaking to write pantomime but but then there are other things where I feel like I have to be completely me in a in a room in my head trying to work something out on my own it's very personal or it's or it's just something I I don't want input for until it's ready for input like it's until it's ready to be in a rehearsal room so it's yeah there's a there's a why I, I I'm happy in, in any situation to be honest as long as we're making something creative and something to be performed then I I'm happy in whatever the project needs I will I will I'll do do you find your own personal life experiences creeping into your work or have you ever specifically set out to put past experience on the stage I don't think I've specifically set out to do it but it always happens um i think it would be very hard to 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 write something without putting some some of you into it i think every, every everybody i've spoken to and I, I think every play that i've written has something of me in it um because you draw you draw on your own experiences in order to you know empathize with what characters going through so even if a character is somebody so far away from your experience or or somebody you don't agree with in any way you can still find ways of um getting into the, their minds and 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 working out what they're going to say based on your own experiences in different situations i think you know you spend a lot of time empathizing as a writer and you and you can't help but put yourself into the things that you you write and how did writing amelia come about yeah <laughs> well um uh, it was it was Michelle Terry. Michelle Terry at the Globe really wanted to play about Amelia, and um, she she we had a cup of tea, and she told me about her. I hadn't heard about her before before August twenty seventeen, and she told me about her and said, "Go away and have a little read up on her and see whether you want to write a play um, about her for next summer." And it was very quick, very quick turnaround. And as soon as I started reading about her, I knew I wanted to 
to do that. But also I knew I wanted to write a play for the Globe, for Shakespeare's Globe, for the main stage. Like it was a huge opportunity that Michelle, yeah. uh, you know, gave me. And the fact that she, that she trusted me with that as well. The fact that she was like, yeah, of course you can do that. Of course, of course you can write a big play for the big stage in less than a year. That was amazing. <laughs> it was huge. I, I couldn't say no to that. So as you were writing it, did you, was it sort of flowing easily or was it hard to get the words how you wanted Um it, it, I mean, because of the speed of it, like, for me, that's really exciting. I like, you know, like I said, I started out writing Edinburgh shows and we'd always write them in, you know, a few months. And I've written pantomimes where you get commissioned in February of the year and you're rehearsing in October. And like, spe- writing shows quickly, that's something I kind of feel like I've almost trained in. And so when it, when, when it came to this, the speed of it didn't worry me. Um, because I I, knew, I know that I've done things in less time, but it definitely, as we started to realise what the play was and what it was about and what it meant to us all, the pressure kind of, as we got closer to us putting on stage, that's when it kind of, it it felt harder because we were really wanting to get it right. And um, But when I f- wrote the first draft, and quite a lot of what's in the play now is in the first draft. Like there, there are whole scenes that have almost remained intact wow. but but it's because it did kind of flow out and it did kind of just come out and and that was after doing a, a certain amount of research and then and working out what we wanted to say and what 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 I was wanting to sort of do with it yeah but I remember sitting down and writing that first draft and it was just like a you know it all just came out and then after that it was like draft after draft of like honing it and adding to it and and making sure that we were getting it all right but well it certainly had one of the biggest and most positive reactions to play that i think i've ever seen how does it feel to have written something that's not just inspiring people but you've ignited passion and you've empowered people like how does that feel oh do you know what it's been really overwhelming because it's a really personal play to everybody that's that's made it and you know much like when we first put it on the very first preview was terrifying because we were kind of like we're putting our hearts up there on that stage and we were worried that people wouldn't you know connect with it or or get it and the fact that so many people have connected with it and got it it's been so affirming I mean it's interesting because it is the sort of play that's sort that is a bit marmite like I do think that there are people out there that really don't like it really don't get it and you know it's just not their their thing and also like in terms of the way that we've created Amelia she's our version of Amelia and there'll be people out there who like that she was nothing like that or I can't bear the way that they've depicted her and that's that's art you know that's you 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 love or you don't like or and but the people that loved it and connected with it um it's been amazing hearing from them like the response online has been incredible and it's it's just lovely because it just makes it feel more like a community. we just connect up don't we and it's that that it's just been really overwhelming for all of us all of us because we didn't we kind of didn't really know what we had and we just hoped that we were you know put, putting words out there that people wanted to hear and and doing it in a way that they wanted to to see it being done so it's been lovely it's been really lovely did you always intend it to be an entirely female cast or was that a decision that was made further down the line? That was pretty early on, actually. Yeah, that was pretty, like me and Nicole, when we were, I think even the first couple of days that we did together researching, um, I, I, it, it was probably a conversation where we just went, how amazing would it be to put a load of women on that stage? You know, the Shakespeare's Globe, which historically would have been all men um it's a very you know it's Shakespeare. it's literally called Shakespeare's Globe so it's it's a male space it feels like and so to kind of reclaim that as ours and and uh, just fill it with women and also fill it with women playing men and um as well as women it just it felt like we just were like well we've got to do that haven't we and it was it was was, it was a no-brainer so we just we just I mean, did. It worked so well. I also felt like it highlighted the absurdity of how some men behaved back then. To see a woman dressed as a man doing it, yeah. it even highlighted how absurd that behaviour was. To see it yeah. played by a woman because a woman wouldn't have acted that way. It was yeah. added a whole yeah. It's, level. It's, it's, it was nice to muck around with that, and also because it's because it's a play told through Amelia's Amelia Three's um, it's her point of view. It's her memory it's a memory play and and so for us it was like well then it's her it's it's a woman's view of men so then it became 
it became, you know, the women playing the men, it was their view of how men behave. And so there is a kind of, you know, um, there is caricature in there and there is emphasis on things that we, we, we see. And, and, and it was really fun to do because, yeah, like you said, that, that so many men have had the opportunity to do that for women and it was really fun for us yeah. to play around with that. So your writing is so incredibly varied. So you've written empowering words that literally get people up on their feet weeping. But you've, <laughs> you've written things that make people sort of more uncomfortable, like the wasp, mm. and then pantomimes and E4 comedies. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what do you have a favourite genre and how do you shift gears between each one? Ah, oh, do you know what? I don't have a favourite genre. I, I, It really depends on what I'm feeling like I, I just love writing and I love I love creating things that shift opinions I like creating things that give people an experience whether that is terrifying them or really like making them laugh or you know I love music I love I just love spectacle and all sorts of different things so like when I'm looking at a project I'm thinking okay what is it that is a why am I saying this what am I saying with this piece but also what is the audience going to feel when they're in that space and it's always about how you know what is the journey we're taking on the, the, we're taking the audience on and how are they going to feel and oh that sort of shifting like by the end of it like feeling like something you've been on a journey and you, you something's shifted inside you I love experimenting with that and whether that's comedy or horror or thriller or whatever it is I kind of I just get a real kick out of that. Like, what what are we going to do with this audience? Just moving on from that, I I read The Wasp and I actually, I was hoping to put on a production of it and I'd been in touch oh. with you, but then lockdown happened. Oh. And so that's, that's definitely still one on my bucket list that I want to do. But, it, I mean, it's gripping, but it's so dark. Like, how do you even begin to write something like that? <laughs> um, God, it really, again, it's that thing of, what different times of your life and what what you're feeling like i mean with the wasp it would it came from a time when i was really sleep deprived because i just had my first kid and i was kind of i was i was quite sort of angry and a bit murderous and i think you know not that i was going to murder my child i was never going <laughs> to murder my child but i think writing this play probably helped do you know what i mean it kind of I, I could channel all of that into it. And I, I was really interested in violence between women in particular and how we, we quite, it's not often seen and or talked about. And, but I also just really wanted to write a play for two women to have an amazing time on stage with. Yeah. And again, that's an experience of like, that's an example of writing something. I knew that it was about the experience of the actresses if, which is really that's always really paramount for me I want to make sure that whoever's doing my plays is having a really good time whether that's doing something really horrible and scary or doing something really funny um but it, also for audiences I just wanted it to be a ride and it kind of is like when we made it when we did the first production of it I just used to love going in and watching from the back because I would just watch the way that the audience went with all the twists and the turns and it was so it was so fun and um yeah so I, I that, came, that uh, to be honest it just at that time I was just really knackered <laughs> and I was wanting to write something to sort of channel these the frustrations and the anger and all that kind of thing that but into something really fun that would be really good to do and it kind of gave me a, a, a focus point for you know when I got through that over that that sort of newborn baby hump you know when I start making theatre again I just wanted to do something really fun so would you say that writing can be a sort of therapy for you at times? Oh, definitely. Yeah. I mean, it also like I, I avoid it all the time. Like I'm ter I'm a terrible avoider for writing. So wh when I do get to, when I do manage to persuade myself to sit down, like it has to be something I'm really enjoying writing. And and it's usually something like this where it like it's something I can get my teeth into. And yeah, it, but when and when I'm in the middle of it, I do tend to like work things out <laughs> work things through so what, I think is other writers so. <laughs> um, what would you say has been the proudest moment of your career so far it's those pinnacle moments isn't it where you go those things that you you hoped that would happen when you start out in your career but that you you don't ever dream I mean you dream it could happen but you don't really, really think it can and so things like opening in the west end was huge like I, that's always been something that I've gone 
oh, imagine having a show on in the West End. And we did it. And it was like with, with Amelia, which is, you, it's almost not, it's not the sort of show you'd normally see on the West End. So it felt like, oh my God, this is huge. I think also doing the uh, the mother and baby, the, the, the mother, father, baby um, performance, the parent performance of Amelia, that was huge. I really, I was really proud of that and what yeah. everybody achieved pulling that together. And winning those Olivier's was pretty great. We had a, you know, that was such a surprise as well. We kind of hadn't, we kind of assumed they'd just given this the nominations because it, it was they were just being really kind to us and being lovely, and then to win it that that I mean that was kind of like a career <laughs> highlight for all of us really, and yeah, and just yeah, it just feels like this last couple of years has just been amazing, and in terms of particularly Amelia, but yeah, hopefully there's more to come. Oh, I'm sure there is. I mean, you say that you you were surprised to win the Olivier's. I, I think nobody else would have been <laughs> i think we were all like yeah <laughs> oh that's lovely and honestly it, genuinely i was so shocked i couldn't when some, when i was phoned up i couldn't speak for about 10 seconds because i couldn't really understand what was happening <laughs> so what totally convinced myself that we wouldn't we well wouldn't. highly deserved i must say <laughs> thank you <laughs> and so if someone's starting out or wants to start out in writing either professionally or as a hobby what advice would you give is there a magic formula to writing the perfect play oh god um well if there is then you, you, uh, somebody's gonna make a lot of money out of that um <laughs> I think starting writing, uh, the, the main thing I say whenever I'm speaking to people who are starting out writing is um, to <laughs> everybody can write. Like uh, it can be hard for some people to write, like physically it can be really hard to write, um, but we've all got it inside us to write something and that whatever you um, write is going to be unique to you and that your play or book or whatever it is you're wanting to write is the one that nobody else will be able to write and you've just kind of got to keep that in the back of your head because it's worth reading books it's worth doing courses it's worth reading all the plays and seeing all the plays and doing all of that it's all worth it but at the same time there'll be a time where you have to kind of zone into you and what it is you want to say and what it is how how it is you want to say it like there is there, there is no one play, you know, there is no one way of doing anything and and sort of like ridding yourself of the expectation that you should be writing like, I don't know, Pinter or you should be writing like Shakespeare or whatever. Just sort of like read all of those, learn from them, but then shake them off and find your own way of writing. And that includes your own like process of writing as well, whatever that is, you know, find find it if you have to write at three o'clock in the morning and that's when you write that's great if you have to write when you're you know really drunk then that's your process I don't know what it is but I think it's we spend a lot of time idolizing the greats and that's that if that's for good reason they've written great things but it doesn't mean you have to emulate them but you you've got to find your own play your own writing style and your own process that's really great advice confidence building as well I think <laughs> well I mean it's, it's pretty much writing is pretty much 90% confidence or 99% confidence you know it kind of that's so much of the ability to write is knowing you can and believing you should and it takes people around sometimes it takes people around you going I believe like Michelle Terry I think you can write this play can you do it please that kind of gave me such a confidence boost that I was like right we're doing this I didn't have to think about I didn't have to think about whether I could or not because Michelle believed in me but like you also should find a way to believe in yourself and it does come from people around you so surround yourself with great people who are always supporting you but also you've got to find it in yourself that you've got to really go no I've got things I need to say and I'm going to find a way to say it and you just got to just keep reminding yourself it's worth it that's end. amazing advice thank you so much for chatting to me <laughs> that's all right. i'm that's such all right. a big Thanks fan of yours like oh, huge well, i hope you get to do the wasp at some point keep oh. me posted with that <laughs>
Oh, I definitely, definitely will. She is such an inspiring lady to talk to. I love how she gives us all the power to create from our own experiences. And on a personal level, she has definitely inspired me to start writing again. I really hope that you enjoyed me shining my little spotlight on Morgan Lloyd Malcolm today. If you did, then please click the thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this one, then hit subscribe because I have so many ready and waiting on my channel coming so soon. Soon. More incredible stars of the stage, award winners, directors and writers, you will not want to miss it. Take care everyone, bye! Hi, thank you so much for getting to this part of the video. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch. I'd love it if you could click subscribe so we can stay in touch and a little like would be nice as well. So why don't you leave a comment, just say hi or let me know any songs you like or anything you'd like to see me cover on this channel and I will see you in the next video. Bye!